shouldn't say good morning, should I? Because you could be looking at this at six o'clock at night. Anyway, hello from uh, Dornbush Partners. Andrew, my footing tipping partner, Nemesis, Rod. And uh, Dornbush Download 144 action-packed episode today. Footy tipping. <laughs> <laughs> Footy tipping. I got four out of eight last week. Andrew, how did you go? Two. Two. Okay. Sorry, I should go that way. It's a bit rude. <laughs> Two. It uh, was uh, not a happy outcome because it was pretty close there. You know, you dropped a couple of course picking New South Wales helped me as well. I was looking um, out of my shoulder. But yeah, mm -hmm. I've just dropped the ball, uh, and that pun was intended for those playing at home. Anyway, we probably should actually talk shares and finance. Uh, Reserve Bank uh, met yesterday. What pearls of wisdom did uh, Governor Lowe and his merry band of uh, gov merry governors uh, <laughs> have for us? Uh, yeah, yesterday afternoon, Andrew, uh, the Reserve Bank met uh, their monthly meeting. They uh, did not change the rate for the 11th consecutive month. It's 1.5% um, still. Mainly due to uh, low wages growth, uh, low, low inflation or subdued inflation under the 2% still. Um, economic growth is, is, is increasing, however, just slowly. So there's no re reason to increase the rates at all to, to slow the economy. Um, one thing I, I did note with statistics the last couple of days as well was um, uh, new building approvals uh, went down in May by 5.6%. Uh, one, one of the reasons for that was uh, the APRA, the Australian Prudential Regulation Authority, Government Department, um, put a cap um, regulation on the banks that any, any uh, interest only, or as they see more higher risk because you're only paying interest, um, interest only loans are capped at 30% of all new loans. So they, they wanted to reduce that to help um, take the heat out of the property market um, and it seems to be working with, um, with low, lower, lower building approvals. So. And yet we've still got um, auction clearance rates above 70% and I know you're talking new home starts but we've got this bit of a disconnect in the economy or the housing market at the moment. Um, that's really one of the tells that we look for. You know, in Sydney and Melbourne, auction clearance rates, were they above or below 70%? And the closer to 70% and below, the more nervous we become. Because if you think about the broader economy and you talk about you know, the RBA not changing rates, we had the mining boom which supported the economy, then we had the housing boom. So what's going to sort of support the market or the economy, broadly speaking, if housing moderates, you know? Um, is it education? Is it tourism? Is it exports? Agriculture. And that's all predicated on a falling dollar that, you know, even the dollar, where is it, 75, 76 cents? I mean, it's certainly better than it was a couple of years ago at a dollar, mm. but the reality is it probably should be mid to high 60s. So, yeah, a few headwinds for the share market, well, sorry, for the economy, and that sort of broadly speaking, then sort of um, talks about where potentially the share market's going to go. So, I'm going to put you on the spot. So where interest rates going, you know, if, I, if you had a crystal ball out and let's say ball. over the next, to the end of the year, end of uh, the calendar mm -hmm. year, where are we I'm at? Sure. I'll, I'll, I'll just make a comment before I make a prediction. Um, Dodge, weave. <laughs> just a few more statistics. Um, yeah, income stress, um, statistics came out and there is, a lot of households are under, under, under stress in regards to paying their mortgages but also meeting their utility bills and, and the like. So. So that's where the Reserve Bank's got to be careful with that um, in regards to increases in interest rates. My prediction is um, getting steady there. for the rest <laughs> of the year. I, I, don't, I, I think they've had 11 straight months with no change. Mm -hmm. uh, potentially, we'll go right through to the end of the year uh, with no change. That's my prediction. Yeah. All right, and my call is, and I'll go a little bit further out, which is a little unfair because I only gave you to the end of this year. Uh, I actually think they'll go down, oh, which, right? which is a big call, big call. But, you know, the economy is not in a happy little place at all. Retail sales, so we had some um, retail sales figures come out uh, yesterday. And even though retail sales were up 0.6% versus 0.2%, if you actually break those numbers down, department stores were down 0.7% for a month. So, you know, you sort of annualise that out. So say I'm a Meyer or I'm a Big W or something like that. Uh, not looking that flash at all. So, yeah, I, I think based on that... Um, Mortgage stress or income stress that you spoke about, moderating housing market, dollar being too high. I, uh, I'd nearly put money, and I'm not talking about it falling a half a percent, but I'd nearly put money on another quarter of a percent. Kim Il-jung lobbying ICBMs, you know, it's a, 
It's a crazy world out there, kids. Be careful. Be careful. <laughs> Be careful out there. I'll stick with my steady prediction. But, yeah, but you're boring. <laughs> um, so anyway, let's uh, personal insults aside. I see I'm trying to throw it off his game with your footy tipping. I don't think it's going to work, <laughs> but anyway. Anyway, what happened in the markets? <laughs> <laughs> what about those Broncos? Um, the other thing, just briefly, um, we wanted to touch on today was talking around July. So July is historically one of the better months of the year from the share market. What are, what's July, one of the, July and December usually. Mm, yeah. So what's, what, from your point of view, Rob, what sort of drives that interest in July? Why is the market better? Yeah. Yeah, you usually get uh, a lot of those like banking dividends coming through, um, and which drives uh, like the the May and June selling May and go away and filters through to June, and so the market has has come back off uh, last couple of months, and so now we're looking at um, opportunities in July, and that's um, usually the case um, year on year. Yeah, so certainly, and you're spot on. That tax loss selling really has a big impact on the market in May and June plus that wave of bank dividends. I mean, banks make $30 billion after tax profit. They pay out around 70 to 80% of that. So you've got this slew of dividends between September and then again in December that get paid out, and that supports the market as well. Uh, but we've got to be a bit cautious because coming into July, it's also um, confession season. So companies report in August, but if they know their figures are going to be up or down 15%, they've got to put their hand up as soon as they know under the continuous disclosure policies of the ASX. So July can be a bit of a tricky month. More towards the end of the month, you know, companies are out there confessing. And as we've just spoke about retail, even though they had a pretty good day yesterday, Harvey Norman up 6 or 7%, JB Hi-Fi up 5%. You know, that's going to be a potentially tricky place for those types of businesses. So as always, share market is a bit volatile. Have a chat to your uh, knowledgeable footy tipping dorms <laughs> partner advisors and uh, not so knowledgeable on the footy tipping and uh, hopefully we can sort of guide you through the uh, maze. Rod, anything else you want to cover up on? Uh, I was just, just one, one stock. Um, this one we prepared earlier. One we prepared earlier. Carnegie Clean Energy. Uh, it's, just, it's just a What's green... code? That's CCD, mm-hmm. next to you, Andrew. Good point. Um, we'll have a chart on the screen for you. Just in regards to... Carnegie Clean Energy, obviously it's a clean energy company and one of, the, one of the beauties of it, this month they've been invited over to the US by the US State Department uh, for two weeks in a two week program with 15 other clean energy companies from around the world. So it's, it's very prestigious to be invited. Um, they want to, US want Carnegie to help um, them meet their clean energy targets, which Mr. Trump, I'm not sure what his actually clean energy target is. It seems to be a moving feast at the moment. But With respect, I don't think he knows what it is anyway. <laughs> but um, in relation to Carnegie, they're a 100% owner and developer of CETO Wave Energy Technology Intellectual Property and also the 100% owner of leading it Australian battery solar microgrid company Energy Made Clean. So they're wave, wave energy and, and battery energy. So um, just one to keep an eye on. Um, just in the new world, clean energy, I think the, it's running around six cents at the moment. So just one to keep an eye on. Certainly one of the pointy, pointy end. So another one to have a chat to us before you decide to do anything. But you're right, clean energy is certainly the place to be. So certainly uh, one to stick on the, uh, the watch list. That's right. Anyway, until next week. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>